Hello and welcome to Integrals 2, day number four topics for today are volumes of revolution using the three methods disc, washer, and shell, as well as volumes by cross-section using the slicing method. Let's get started. Okay, let's get started with the disc method. We're going to do a revolution about the x-axis using the graph of the following. A uh, quick sketch of y equals 2, x equals 5, in quadrant 1, Here's x equals 5, and y equals, whoa, let's try that again, y equals, one more time, 2. Okay, there's y equals 2. If we were to revolve uh, this function, y equals 2, about the x-axis, we would see that we would get a cylinder formed. Okay, so as we form this cylinder, we can think of this geometrically and then using calculus. Right, we could clearly, using geometry, use this formula here for the volume of a cylinder. Now, let's equate that to the sketch. So, pi would be multiplied by r squared. And in this case, r is y equals 2. I'm going to generalize it using y. And then h is the change in x. So, in the first quadrant, we're bounded by the interval 0 to 5. Therefore, the volume of a cylinder would be pi times y squared times delta x. Okay, in this case, y clearly is 2. So this would be pi times 4, because that's 2 squared, times delta x, which would be 5. So our volume of this cylinder should be 20 pi units cubed. Now let's break this down just a little bit further. So the volume of a cylinder that we said was pi times y squared times delta x. Okay, so using calculus, how we would do that using the uh, disk method is we take pi times the integral. We, we deal with the delta x by using the integral from 0 to 5 with respect to x. And then, of course, we take y and we square it. Now, this looks very similar. Like the disk method, what are we really doing? We're calculating the area of a bunch of circles, right? And the radius typically is our y, our function. Now, it, it'll change from time to time. But if the area of each of these circles is pi y squared, okay, and then we take it along a certain interval, delta x, that looks very similar to pi r squared times h. Okay, so this is a formula right here using the disk method. The volume is going to be a to b of pi times y squared dx. Of course, y isn't in terms of y, it's y in terms of x. Okay, let's look at disk method around the y-axis. Very similar. Uh, if I were to take the graph of x equals 3 and y equals 8 and give myself a rectangle here, and then I were to revolve that around the y-axis, Clearly, we would get a cylinder just now revolving about the y-axis instead. Okay, so now, it's slightly different. The volume of the cylinder will equal pi times x squared, right? x is going to be our radius in this case. Okay, there's our x value, which of course is 3 here, times h, which is now instead of delta x, it's now delta y. All right, so we get delta y. So the volume of this cylinder should be pi times 3 squared times 8, which comes out to be, I think, 72 pi units cubed. So generalizing that, the volume in this case will be pi x squared delta y, which just means that we're going to take pi from 0 to 8 of x squared, which is 2 squared, or excuse me, 3 squared, times dy. Okay, so we can generalize yet again. Anything that's being revolved horizontally, okay, specifically around the y-axis, we can use that formula. Okay, let's try a couple of examples. Okay, let's uh, look at example number one. Uh, it says, find the volume of the solid formed when the function f of x equals e to the 1 minus x in the interval 0 to 1 is rotated 2 pi radians about the x-axis. Okay, so we're going to do a disk method. And 
we're going to have this function which looks like this. Now it will continue on, but from 0 to 1, the graph of the function will look like this. This will be the point 1, 1. This will be the point 0, e. Okay, so we're going to take this space and revolve it around the x-axis. So it should, oops, so it should look like, like this. If we were to give it some depth, it should end up looking like that. Okay, so about the x-axis, let's use our interval, let's use our function, and uh, let's do a little integration. So we're gonna take the volume, which would be pi, I'm gonna pull that out as a constant, integral from zero to one, All right? that's our change in x, times y squared. So that'll be e to the one minus x quantity squared dx. All right, we just got a little bit of uh, work to do here algebraically. So the, um, the expression on the inside, if I were to distribute a 2, would be e to the 2 minus 2x. And I can integrate that relatively easily. That will be 1 half, excuse me, negative 1 half e to the 2 minus 2x. And that will be evaluated from 0 to 1. So we use the fundamental theorem of calculus. Plugging in a 1 first ends up being negative 1 half uh, times e to the 0 minus, now we plug in a zero. This will be negative one half e to the two. Okay, now we can clean this up a little bit. Um, that would be pi times, uh, since I'm subtracting a negative, I'm gonna bring this out in front, go e squared minus one all over two. And that would be our volume in units cubed. Okay, no calculator option there. It's good. Test your ability to find uh, an antiderivative. Okay, let's look down at part B. Part B is going to allow us to use a calculator. Uh, however, now we are revolving this horizontally about the y-axis. So let's sketch and just see what this will look like. So here's the point uh, 1, 1, 1, 1, and 0, e. Oops, let's try that again. All right. Zero E, one, one, good. When I revolve around the y-axis, we're gonna get an image, a solid, that looks kind of like this. Now, this is an interesting question here because as we revolve this, we're actually going to use two separate functions. First, we're gonna use that red function then we're gonna use our actual function given, right? This function being y equals e to the one minus x, and this function in red being x equals one. Okay, so first we revolve the red function around, which accumulates this volume here, this hockey puck looking space. And then after that, we revolve the blue on a separate interval in terms of y, and we get the upper portion. Okay, so let's construct this. So our volume would equal, let's work the red portion first. This will be pi. This will be the integral for our x or our y values from this point, 1, 0. So our y value is 0 up to 1, 1. So we're going to go from 0 to 1 of our function, which is 1 squared dy. Okay, of course, remember we're doing a horizontal ro revolution, therefore we're in terms of y plus. Let's work with the blue portion. This will be pi times the integral from y value, which is 1, up to y value, which is e, 1 to e. However, I need to solve this for x in terms of y. Remember, because I want x squared. So I'm going to solve for this in terms of x. So I'm going to write this in logarithmic form. So this would be the natural log of y is equal to 1 minus x, and therefore x would equal, uh, that would be 1 minus ln of y. Okay, so as we work through this, of course, we're going to take that, and this is an, clearly an example where I'm going to have you use a calculator because I don't want you to integrate that after you FOIL it out. Okay, integrating ln of y squared would require integration by parts, um, at this point, 
I'm okay with just kind of getting used to the calculator method. Okay, let's continue this. Okay, so if you evaluate um, the first integral, you'll actually just get pi. All right, so the volume here ends up being pi plus uh, some some stuff here. Okay, and I'm not necessarily worried about that. I'm a, I'm worried about uh, your final answer, which when you use math nine, so you'd press math nine, and then I would input this as uh, y one. And then, of course, don't forget to square it, and definitely don't forget to multiply by pi after you integrate. Okay, so my answer that I end up getting is, um, let's see here, 4.51. Okay, so that's the volume that we end up getting for the revolution about the y-axis. I think that brings, uh, and I should have written this out, but this comes out to be 1.3. Uh, three seven one and change okay so uh, that is your disk method really ultimately what we're doing is we're we're sliding circles of different size right into a solid right and in most cases it comes out to be you know a cylinder or it could come out to be you know almost like, like this trapezoidal type shape right three dimensional in nature um, it depends on the functions that you're given, okay? So with that being said, let's move on to the uh, washer method. All right, the washer and shell methods. So the washer method is, uh, is a method, they're actually almost exactly the same other than just their axis of revolution. So the washer method is uh, a method used when revolving around an axis y equals c, whereas the shell method is the method used when revolving around x equals c. So shell is a horizontal revolution, washer is a vertical revolution. So let's derive the formula for the washer method about a vertical revolution about the line y equals negative one. Okay, so I'm gonna try to do this sketch to the best of my ability. Uh, it won't be perfect, I promise you that. Uh, here's your x-axis, here's your y-axis. Here's the line y equals five, here's the line y equals two y equals 2. Uh, let's go with the line y equals negative 1 as our axis of revolution. So if I revolved uh, this line y equals 5 about y equals negative 1, this end, right, the function itself, would end up at uh, what would that be? Y equals negative 7. Put them up down here. Y equals negative 7. Okay, and the inner function, if I revolve 2 about Y equals negative 1, I would end up at Y equals negative 4. Y equals negative 4. Okay, so as I revolve this, green will go to green. Blue will go to blue, and what we'll get is this uh, paper towel roll. All right, and the geometric shape that's related to this, I'm not going to draw all of those. I'll just continue the process down to the very end where we can see it clearly. That paper towel roll. Uh, if I were to think of it in two dimensions, that area is pi big R squared minus pi little r squared. Okay, now um, volume is going to be the area of that times the height. So if I look at this, big R, okay, big R ends up being y equals 5 minus a negative 1. And I end up squaring that minus, oops, I'm sorry, that square was in the wrong place. There we go. You square that minus pi times little r. Little r in this case is 2 minus a negative 1. 
squared. And then all of that, I'm going to run out of space here, um, all of that times our change in x, which was from, oh, we wanted to go out to x equals 5. I didn't even write that out there. Okay, times 5. Okay, so um, when it comes to that, what you'll see is that I've got pi integral from 0 to 5 of big F minus whatever the axis of revolution is squared minus little f, which in this case was 2, also minus the axis of revolution squared. And that's in terms of x. Okay, so look at what we've got now. We can find using the washer method vertically um, the volume of revolution. Wherever that axis of revolution is, it doesn't matter. Okay, now let's, uh, let's quick, I'm not going to go through the shell method graph, but this would be, of course, our shell method formula. Now everything's in terms of y, our axis of revolution would be now a vertical axis. You can see x equals c. So let's try to use these formulas in a couple of examples on the next slide. Okay, well, there's no calculator example for part A of number two. I'm hoping I have enough space. Otherwise, I'll sketch the graph off to the side to save some space. It says, find the volume of the solid formed when the region on the interval from zero to four between the two curves is rotated about the line y equals negative one. Okay, so let me sketch this. Make sure I get enough space. Okay, square root of x. Square root of x looks like this, and 1 over x looks like this, out to x equals 4. Okay, so y equals 1 over x. Okay, so it wants me to revolve this around the line y equals negative 1. So let's sketch the horizontal line y equals negative 1. All right, so I can see that big R for a portion of this is going to be the square root of x. Check out what big R is going to be. It's going to be this portion of that function. Okay, now what will little r be? Little r will end up actually being that distance for that entire interval, right? So I'd have big R, big R, big R, and little r, little r, little r, or little f of x. So let's determine what big F of x would equal. Big F of x is equal to the square root of x. And the little f is actually equal to 0. All right, it's just the line y equals 0. Now, again, let's determine what big F minus c is equal to. So big F of x minus c. Well, that's going to equal the square root of x minus a negative 1, which is plus 1. Plus 1. Whereas little f minus c is going to equal 0 minus a negative 1, which will be 1. Okay, so now we can construct our integral. I still don't, it, that's for at least for part of it. Now, i got to look at the second half, right, because I am revolving that entire enclosure, and by that enclosure, I mean this one right here. Uh, let me use a different color. How about yellow? This entire enclosure right here from 0 to 4. So I have to account for the rest. Now, big F on the second half will be 1 over X. So let's uh, maybe we'll just go with it and, and see how this rolls. So the volume will equal pi integral this point right here is the point 1, 1. So I'm going to go from 0 to 1, where big F is going to be square root of x. And we said that big F plus minus C is square root of x plus 1. So that's our big R, right? Our big radius minus little f minus C, which we said was 1 squared dx. 
Okay, we're going to do the same thing now for the second interval. The second interval is going to go from x equals 1 out to this point right here. I'm going to put that point in a different color, call it purple. That point right there will be the point 4, comma, 1 fourth, right, if I just plug it into 1 over x. So I'm going to integrate now from 1 out to 4 of 1 over x plus 1, that's big R, minus 0 plus 1, which is 1. So little r didn't change throughout the entire function. All right, it was always 1 because it was the distance from the line y equals 0 down to the axis of revolution, which was always 1. Okay, now we got some work to do algebraically here. So this will be pi uh, integral from 0 to 1 of x, that's root x squared, plus 2 root x plus 1 minus 1 dx plus pi times the integral from 1 to 4 of 1 over x squared plus 2 over x plus 1. I just uh, foiled that out, minus 1 dx. We can clean this up before integrating. Actually, we could probably integrate. What we'll see is that the 1s will drop off in both cases. So if I were to integrate these, uh, I would get, uh, let's see, x squared over 2 plus the integral of 2 root x would be 4 thirds x to the 3 halves. Okay, and that will be evaluated from 0 to 1 plus pi times, let's integrate these, this will be negative 1 over x uh, plus 2 ln of x evaluated from 1 to 4. Okay, once we evaluate this, we'll have our volume. I'm going to factor out a pi. Okay, so as we evaluate, after factoring out that pi, we would get, uh, what would that be, 1 half plus 4 thirds minus uh, 0 plus 0. That would be our first integral evaluated. Since I factored out a pi, then I would evaluate negative 1 over x plus 2 ln of x from 1 to 4. So that would be negative 1 fourth. Uh, plus 2 ln of 4 minus a negative 1 plus 2 ln of 1, which would be 0. All right, let's take a couple more steps to clean this thing up. Uh, this would equal, let's see, these would be zeros. This would be a plus 1. So it looks like on the right end, if I added negative 1 fourth and positive 1, I would get a positive 3 fourths plus 2 ln of 4. So 3 fourths, and I'm actually going to write 2 ln of 4 as ln of 16. Okay. And then over here, I'm going to add 1 half and 4 thirds. Uh, let's go to twelfths. Uh, so that would be 6 twelfths and... 16 twelfths, that'd be, uh, hold on now, 1 half is equivalent to 6 twelfths, yes, and 4 thirds is equivalent to 16 twelfths. Okay, I'm good with that. So 22 twelfths. Uh, so we'd add these together, and we would get a volume uh, in a somewhat clean form of... 9, that'd be 31 twelfths plus the natural log of 16. Okay, very cool. There you have it. That would be no calculator. Clearly a lot of work there. Let's look at a calculator example. Uh, it looks like my notes got all scrambled. Um, but let's do it. Okay, so again, we've got this same volume, right? It's so the square root of x, 1 over x. Let's just real quick set this thing up. Okay, so we got square root of x, 1 over x. Uh, here's square root of x and 1 over, my goodness, it's hard to sketch. There we go, that's better. 1 over x. 
uh, we'll go out to x equals 4. We're going to take that and we're going to revolve it around this line x equals negative 2. Okay, so here's our axis of revolution. Of course, if that is our axis of revolution, then negative 2 is equal to c. So c is equal to negative 2. It looks like big F for a portion of the graph up to this point will be this function right here. Okay, which is x equals 4. But then, of course, we're going to take big F minus c. So we can construct that in a minute. Once we get to this point, this point is the point uh, 4, 1 fourth. We can then swap, and now our upper function will be 1 over x. Okay, now our lower function will always be the same function, right? It's always going to be square root of x. Okay, so let's try to build our integral, and then we'll make sense of it, <clears throat> excuse me, in a second here. Okay, so let's build this. This volume is going to be pi integral. I'm going to go from 0 to 1 fourth of big F of y minus c. So big F of y is the function x equals 4. Okay, and I know that it's not in terms of y. That's because it's linear. Okay. So I'm going to take 4 minus a negative 2, which if you look at this, uh, this distance, this green distance right here, it's 6, right? The big R, big R or big F is always 6, which it always will be. There's no variable dependence there. Okay. Now we're going to subtract little f which little f we have to, if we take y equals the square root of x, f of y would then be x equals y squared. So little f of y is y squared. So then we're going to take y squared minus a negative 2 squared and integrate with respect to y. Okay, now I have to add the upper portion. Okay, the upper portion, by that I mean this interval from here to here, no longer is this uh, big F. This is now big F. So if uh, y equals 1 over x, then our big F on that second interval will be, um, of course, we're going to go from 1 fourth up to 1, which is the point of intersection right here. This is the point 1, 1. So your big F will be... 1 over y minus a negative 2, which would be plus 2 squared, minus your little f would be y squared plus 2 squared dy. All right, so let's build this in the calculator. What I would do is I'd just type pi, put parentheses, do a math 9, go from 0 to 1 fourth, and I would just plug in 6, square it, minus, and I would put in for y1 uh, x squared plus 2. So then you could just put in y1, square it, and dx. Now notice that I'm working with dx. Even though we're revolving this horizontally, your calculator isn't as friendly. So we got to use x. So be, be okay with that because that's what you're going to have to do. Okay, so now, again, another integral. And I've already factored out of the pi. So I'm going to go from 1 fourth to 1 of, and I would type in for y2. I would type in 1 over x plus 2. So you could take y2 squared minus, and you've already defined this as y1 squared and dx. Let's see what we get in our calculator. I end up getting 47.2 units cubed. All right, let's do a couple more with uh, washer and shell, and then we'll look at cross-section. Okay, number three, right, but do not evaluate an integral expression finding the volume of the solid formed when the region from zero to four between the two curves is rotated two pi about the line y equals e. Okay, so now your um, axis of revolution is y equals e. So a little bit disoriented, but um, what we can do is we use exactly what we know, okay? So the volume will be pi. And on this first interval, let's take uh, the interval from uh, 0 to 1. 
according to x. Look what big R will be. All right, and we're going to stop right here. What will big R equal? Well, it would be 0 minus e quantity squared. Okay, so 0 minus e quantity squared. Now, you could take e minus 0 quantity squared if you wanted to. That's totally fine. The smaller the two functions, or the little r, or little f, if you will, would be square root of x. Okay, so we could take square root of x minus e quantity squared. Again, you can go either way with it, either e minus square root of x or square root of x minus e because we are squaring. Okay, so that would be dx, and we're going to integrate that from 0 to 1. Now, the other portion of the graph, we still know that big F is 0 minus e, which I'm just going to write as uh, from, let's go from 0, excuse me, from 1 to 4 of, since it's 0 minus e, I'm just going to call it e, square it, subtract them, um, e minus 1 over x. Now, like I said before, I could swap these two. Okay, I could swap the e and the 1 over x. It doesn't matter because I'm squaring it. But what this would do is this would find this volume when that space is revolved around our line. Okay? And then the other integral would find the volume of the second portion of that graph revolved around the same axis. Okay? All right, let's look at another no calc or actually do not evaluate example. It says write but do not evaluate an integral expression finding the volume of the solid formed when the region between the two curves is rotated about x equals 2. Okay, so this is going to be a horizontal reflection, or excuse me, horizontal revolution. Let's look at what it'll look like. Here's 2 sine x. So it looks like I'm setting this up rather nicely. Here's pi over 2. Okay, looks like sine would go to about there. Yep. And then 8x squared over pi squared. So conveniently, g of pi over 2, I believe, ends up being, yeah, it ends up being 2. Nice. So 8 over pi squared x squared ends up looking like this. All right. <clears throat> so this space is going to be revolved around this axis, x equals pi over 2. All right. So let's write an equation if it were to be revolved. Okay. So big F. would be that, which of course, big F would then be in terms of Y. Okay, so let's see what that would be. I'm gonna take Y, set it equal to sine, two sine X. So uh, it looks like X would equal the arc sine of Y over two. Okay, so arc sine Y over two. Okay, and then uh, the little f would be this function in terms of y. Therefore, if y equaled 8 over pi squared x squared, then x squared would equal uh, pi squared y over 8. So x would equal the square root of that. It's not worth simplifying all that much here. Um, so little f of y would equal that, pi squared y over 8. All right, let's construct our integral. We're going to go volume, pi, integral. Now, there are, there is no interval change here, so we can go from 0, right? We can go from y equals 0 right here up to y equals, oops, 2. This would be the integral from 0 to 2 of big F minus C. Okay, so we can take, uh, let's see, arc sine 
of, we'll call it x over 2, minus c, which would be minus pi over 2, squared, minus little f, which would be square root of pi squared. we got to go x over 8. Now, if you were to write this and not evaluate, I guess you should write it in terms of y. But if you were to use your calculator, so I should technically plug a y in there, plug a y in there. Okay, and then minus pi over 2 squared all with respect to y. So that would find you your volume from 0 to 2 if this space were revolved around the line x equals pi over 2. Now, I'm, of course, this isn't a beautiful sketch, but it's pretty darn close. Okay, uh, let's go on to volumes by cross section and slicing. Okay, cross sections and slicing. This is uh, one of my favorite topics, but let's write and not evaluate an integral expression for the volume of a solid whose base is the in the region, uh, or base is the region in quadrant one bounded by the following. So I'm going to give this graph a little bit of perspective so you can see it kind of elevate off the graph. So here's your x-axis, here's your y-axis. So I'm going to graph f of x equals x squared. Okay, so let's go out to x equals 2. That would make this point here y equals 4. Okay, so we want <clears throat> everything here to be bounded in quadrant 1 within x squared, y equals 0, and x equals 2. So you're going to see the graph and the, the physical shape take place within the bounds of those three things. Okay, so it says the cross sections through the solid are perpendicular to the x-axis and they are squares. So let's see what that solid would look like. So they're perpendicular to the x-axis right there and they're squares. So we're gonna see this solid show up and it's gonna kind of look like like an accordion style shape, right? It's a bunch of squares that increase in size as x increases from zero to a two. So how would we write out an integral for that? Okay, well, let's, let's consider what's going on. Okay, so the area of each of those squares in terms of x, let's construct that first. Well, the area of a square in terms of its sides is side squared. Okay, so if I were to flip this square, kind of look at it here, and I've got a bunch of smaller squares, you can you can tell like it's it, if I look at it from this view, that's what it would look like. Now, what would those sides be? Well, that side would be the distance from the y-axis or the x-axis up to the function. So that's going to be f of x. And the height, if they're squares, will also be f of x. So s, in this case, equals f of x. All right, so in terms of x, I would have x squared as s squared. So my area function is x to the fourth. So how would I integrate to find the volume? Well, I'd just go on the interval from 0 to 2 of the area function, x to the fourth. And that if I were to evaluate it, it, would give me my volume. Awesome. So find A of X, plug it in, integrate from uh, bound to bound. All right, write but do not evaluate an integral expression for the volume of a solid whose base is the region. Okay, in quadrant one, let's give some perspective to quadrant one here. Okay, x-axis, y-axis, we've got the square root of x, y equals 0, and x equals 9. So here's the square root of x. we got y equals 0, we got x equals 9. Okay, so our curve is going to be bounded within that space. We can sketch it real quick. Okay, and some red, like that. That's nice and clean. Okay whose cross-sections perpendicular to the x-axis are half-circles. OK, 
the half circle. So let's sketch a half circle here. So a half circle would look kind of like that. Another half circle would look kind of like that. And like that. And like that. And like that. Okay, so you can see this kind of takes shape. It's not perfect. But if I were to look at it from the side view, if I were to stand here and look at that, I would see a half circle. And then I would see another half circle and another and another. It's kind of a cool setup, right? Tunnel-like. Okay, so how do you find the area of a half circle? Well, you take pi times r squared and you divide by two. So in this case, what would r equal? Well, I know what this length would equal. It would equal f of x. All right, so then r would equal f of x over 2. Okay, so a of x would equal pi over 2 times the square root of 2, excuse me, the square root of x over 2 quantity squared. So our area function in terms of x would be pi times x, because the square root of x squared is x, over 8. So we can integrate to find the volume. Of course, uh, I would pull out, let's pull out the pi over 8. And then all you have to do is integrate from 0 to 9 of x dx. There you go, guys. That's some cross-sectional volume, some cool stuff. Um, we will see you, I believe, next chapter. Have a great day.